Hi YouTube friends, it's E here again. And I actually wasn't looking at the whole comment from one of my viewers here. And they are interested in deficiency on all food intakes, including meat. Hmm. At the moment, whether it can be reversed on fasting. Uh, so they would be interested in hearing about my B12 and urinary iodine. And wondering also if my memory issues may be linked to iodine or B12. Uh, lack or lack of B12. I don't really know. But... Uh, B12 is something you definitely have to be concerned about if you're a vegan. Most B12 comes from meat products and dairy products that's added in there. And actually it's added in there kind of naturally from the plants that they eat and the bacteria and things like that. Because B12 is actually a bacteria. Having a deficiency of B12 could be a problem for sure. Absolutely it could affect your nervous system. It's something you definitely don't want to happen to yourself. It takes years and years to become B12 deficient. On the other hand, your body stores bunches of B12 and uses it as it needs it. B12 is also water soluble, which means if you take bunches and bunches of it, your body will take what it needs and dispose of the rest. So it's not really it's not really a problem of getting too much of it. There's different kinds of B12. There's cyanocobalamin, which is what you usually see on the store shelves, and there's a methylcobalamin. So cyanocobalamin is actually cyanide from cyanide. I myself don't really want any extra cyanide in my diet. Not that it's a huge problem at the small amounts that it would be, but what I use is methylcobalamin, and I purchase it from a company called Trim, I think it's Trim Nutraceuticals, or they're in Clearwater, Florida, and it's actually a B12 that you snort into your nose, kind of blow your nose out first and clean it out, and then it has like a little pump spray bottle like you would some saline solution or something like that. And I don't even use it that often, I just use it every once in a while. I've never in the past had a B12 deficiency. I've had other B vitamin deficiency, but never B12. So, but it's it's always smart to just take it once in a while anyway. So it's not really a problem or worry about, you know, you don't have to worry about that uh, if you take it every once in a while. So every two weeks or so, I'll do a snort or two of the B12. As far as iodine deficiency, <clears throat> I don't know that I have ever been tested for iodine. And I don't really see doctors very often anymore. And it would probably cost me a lot to go do that, being it's the beginning of the year with the deductible and all that kind of stuff. So I don't really have great coverage. So I don't know that I'll do that. But I may look into what foods contain more iodine. And I usually use a pendulum to do... I know it sounds really bizarre, but I usually use a pendulum to check out all my vitamins and minerals for uh, excess or deficiencies. So I could probably do that. It's probably a really good idea. And they also asked me about the mass that while I, while I was fasting and my stomach was getting real thin and as I was laying in bed, I was moving my intestines along a lot, just trying to get the old yuck moving out out of my intestines and there was a mass that was right to the right side of my belly button and below down towards my groin so that mass didn't seem to move at all during the whole entire fast and then towards the end when I had the first couple bowel movements by the time after the 26 day fast and by the fourth day of refeeding so we're looking at about a month of no bowel movements at all, 30 days or more of no bowel movements. But when I did start having bowel movements, I had I had that mass move out. So it's pretty much completely gone. And it was kind of concerning me because I was thinking, boy, if this was an intestinal stuffification of feces, it should be moving a little bit, shouldn't it? But it really, it, I don't think, I don't think it was a, a mass that I was getting scared of. I think it actually was just uh, old fecal matter that was stuck, and it finally did come loose. 
and I believe it's all gone and I was feeling for it the other night just kind of checking it out even though I got a little bit of the stomach back I still can pretty much feel what's going on in there so that's that's a clear thing so as far as your B12 if you're going to be a vegan or a raw vegan you do want to get it checked if you have if you have health coverage there's no reason not to ask the doctor to check your B12 levels the truth is so many people are low on B12 whether you're a meat eater or a cheese eater or both uh, no matter how you eat, it seems to be an issue. The problem is not necessarily what you're eating, it's what you assimilate and what you absorb. Because it seems our intestines as in American people with all the processed foods and all the wheats and all the GMOs that we have problems absorbing and assimilating what we eat. And that seems to be why we're an overfed and undernourished nation. This is a known fact. So... Fasting is a really nice way to to heal yourself for that because it brings your intestines back to a place where they're they're a lot more healthy and all the cili cilia. Uh, I don't know if I ever explained the whole intestinal system to you, but let me just go into the small intestinal part. So it has all these little cilia and they're these little hair-like. Uh, uh, structures that so you have the tube of your small intestine and then you have all these little hairs that come out through and each one of them absorbs nutrients vitamins minerals and things like that so instead of having a surface of this on the inside of your intestines to absorb and assimilate your, what you're eating you have all these hair like structures that come out so each one of these have their own surface area that adds more surface area then there's another one and another one and another one so you have so much of your small intestine which is about 23 feet long that takes in all that you need for your body to function for all your cells tissues muscles organs the brain nervous system uh, circulatory system everything functions because of what you're assimilating and absorbing so that's why your small intestine is so important and it has to be in good health so if your small intestine is not in good health and all these little cilia that are supposed to be on the inside of this tube absorbing and assimilating and all that all around the whole entire tube a lot of times what happens is they're all just kind of glued to the inside of the uh, if you think of wheat as gluten and it's like a glue and if you think about kids who make paste in school they could make paste out of water salt and wheat and it turns into a glue so that's pretty much what happens in your intestines so all these little cilia that are supposed to be free free and absorbing and doing their job they're kind of just glued to the inside of the wall of your intestine so you have this little tube that's just absorbing what little it can so that's the problem with us not getting our B vitamins and our minerals and our nutrients and, and everything. So when you fast, you kind of heal, heal that up and allow your intestines to get back to that happy state that they once were where they, all the little cilia can do their job. And so no matter who you are, no matter what you eat, you definitely have to look for some problems with absorbing and assimilating and I feel like I'm absorbing and assimilating a lot better than I was before the fast for sure and I have a feeling that uh, uh, the reason I was so anemic since I was a teenager I mean I was extremely anemic was because I was not absorbing and assimilating all the iron I was eating and I have to laugh because I was on iron pills for a long time. Uh, I could talk about that maybe in another video because that's a whole other story. But it does have to do with assimilation and absorption of nutrients, uh, vitamins and minerals. So hope that kind of answers your question a little bit or at least uh, goes more into the statement that you made about the about maybe being low on some certain things in, in my body. But as long as you eat a real good variety of fruits and vegetables, real small amount of nuts and seeds, if any, uh, you could get your fat from avocado. If you want a little fat, that's a nice way to have it. The nuts and seeds tend to make the face red when I do too much of them for sure. But anyway, not to go off on a whole tangent, but that's a little bit about your small intestine and how it works and how you assimilate and how you absorb nutrients, minerals, and things like that. So thanks for watching and I will catch you again soon 
and take care. And next time I get back to you, I'll talk about iron. Take care. Peace. Thanks.